right, guys, welcome back to another Funded Trader interview. I have Usman here with me today. He just earned a 200K account this past Sunday. So Usman, you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Where are you from? Yeah, so I'm from the United Kingdom. I uh, started trading about five years ago, just started becoming profitable and uh, just enjoying the journey, to be honest with you. And what's your educational background? My educational background, to be honest, I just went to school and college and then dropped out at that point because I didn't really want to work for anyone at that point. I just wanted to focus on myself. I was thinking of going university, but I didn't really see any point of it and I didn't see no enjoyment in it going universities. That's when I started finding my own career path and started on business adventures. Sure. And what do you do for a living now? Uh, right now, I was a carer, and then after doing care, I work for the NHS at the moment with the COVID vaccination helpline. And so with all the stuff that you have going on, how'd you start out in Forex? So I started off in Forex when I was about 21, 22, and I started learning about these binary options and started getting into that, a way of getting rich quick like everyone does. So I started doing that, and... Uh, Straight away, quickly, I found out this is a difficult thing to do. And it's something I enjoyed actually to do is repetitive, competitive, and I enjoy being competitive. So I gave it a chance at that point. And since that time, I've not stopped. I've gone along, failed, 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 but continued and continued and continued. It was just online research, finding ways to get rich. And this was the thing that I came across first. And you said you started when you were 21. How old are you now? I'm 29 now. So I started a long time ago. Yeah, I've been through a lot of fails, been through a lot of upsetness, you know, had a lot of uh, had a lot of hard breakdowns, but I never gave up. Well, it certainly paid off. I mean, your man definitely. 200K. Definitely, definitely. So in this eight year time period, now how much time did you dedicate to studying like every week or every day? Should I be honest with you, I was nearly on it every single day, 24 hours a day. I was having late nights where I'd stay up till four o'clock in the night. I would study, study, study. I'd go on babypips.com, learn every single information that I wanted to learn. I'd go and watch free videos on YouTube. At that time, I didn't really have no mentors because they were charging too much and there weren't really that many in the game. Not many people knew about Forex. It was kind of new at that point. So I had to learn everything myself. I learned sport and resistance. Then I learned supply and demand. I was just going all over the place, trying different strategies. One week this works, one week that works. And I was just at a point where I was giving up with my life. So I quit for a couple of years and then I came back and then I quit again for a couple of years and then I came back. And eventually I started finding the right way and started following the right people. And eventually I found that success that I was looking for, to be honest. And in this whole eight year journey, you know, what are some of the hardest lessons that you learned um, through trading? Should I be honest, the hardest lessons that I've learned and I'm still learning till this day is self-discipline and psychology. That is the hardest thing, like removing emotions, not getting attached to trades, only trading a few trades and not getting addicted and greedy. That's one of the hardest lessons I learned. And till this day, I still struggle at times, even though I've traded, I'll sit there and be like, OK, I need to trade. And then I think, no, I've made my money, switch off, just walk away. So that's the hardest lessons I've learned, how to control money and money management, even in real life as well, and how to control my emotions. I think that was the hardest thing that I went through with trading because trading is not an easy game, especially when it comes to psychology. Now, for our viewers at home, you know, what's a piece of advice you would give to them to keep their psychology in check? My piece of advice is do less of more. Don't do too much. Don't overthink too much. Don't look at the charts constantly. The more you spend on the charts, the more confused you get, the more things that you start seeing popping up. Take your time, uh, make a plan, make a strategy, stick with it, not just for a week, stick with it at least for a couple of months, see if it works, if it needs tweaking, tweaks. For example, this is what I do just to keep my risk management in check. I have three jars, one with loss, win and break even. And I put marbles in there every single time with a win, lose, a break even. And that keeps me in check, showing how many wins I've done, how many losses I've done. Oh, well, I kind of like that exercise. It's a nice like yeah, visual yeah. exercise, you know, it definitely keeps things definitely. in perspective, De definitely. 100%. There's one more thing that I do as well. So above my wall where my PC is, I'll put notes there, you know, keep my risk management intact. If you don't, you'll fail. I put like all sorts of sticky notes so I can read them when I'm doing my trading. So I brief myself knowing if this trade loses, 
okay, step back, come back the next day, look for the great opportunities. That's what I normally do. It's hard, don't get me wrong, it's difficult. And for those people out there, I, I, I've been through it, I've done it all. I know how difficult it could be and frustrating it could be, but you just got to continue on going and get rid of the negativity and just push on and push on. No, that kind of leads me to another question. Would, are you a trader that's sitting in front of the charts actively looking for setups or are you setting alerts and walking away, coming back when those alerts come off and evaluating from there? So what I normally do is I'll come onto the chart, spend a few hours, put alerts and then walk away, wait for my alerts to hit. Once my alerts have popped up, then I come back onto the charts and go from it. But normally I do spend times on my PC a lot because I'm working from home. So I use the computer. So while I'm working, I'll go ahead and look at my charts at times. So normally I do normally I do both, but setting alerts is better for me because if I sit there looking at charts constantly, I'm just going to take a stupid trade or do something silly. So that's the best advice I would give. And that's what I normally do myself. And for all our work from home traders watching right now, you know, what advice would you give as far as balancing a remote job and trading at the same time? I'd say put a schedule down. So what I normally do is if I work from eight in the morning till four, I'll wake up earlier, set alerts, set trades, go to sleep early. And that's the way I would go. Or if there's no trades uh, for the Asian session, waking up to the morning session, I would go to sleep, wake up and uh, continue for the US session. That's what I would do. So I schedule my trading around my workplaces. And if I've got time off, like one hour for break, I would go check the chart, check if any alerts, check if it's being hit and then take trades from there and continue doing my job. And outside of the funded trader, do you participate in any trading communities? Should I be honest, I used to participate in communities back in the day, but there was a lot of like, how can I say, there was a lot of indecisions, a lot of different traders with different opinions and stuff. And it kind of would mess up my psychology. Like if I was taking a trade, someone else would say, no, I'm taking it like this. And it just ruined everything for me. So at that point, I decided, you know what, I need to get out of communities and you start watching too many trading videos and focus on what I need and myself. Like I do have traders. I do have traders as friends who I talk to, but I talk to them privately, but not for trading matters at that point. Okay. And what was your first impression of the funded trader? And how did you find us in the first place? Uh, the first impression when I joined the funded trader, what made me... Uh, like most addicted to join the funded trader was the 6% that they give you and the 12% that they give you and was the payout as well. The payout was really high and that looked good. Um, first time I found the funded trader was from a YouTuber. I think his name is not really too sure about his name, but I watched his videos and from there, uh, I went onto the funded trade and realized this is a good company, established company. And plus, I've seen that guy's video so many times and he's a truthful and good YouTuber. So from there, I followed him and I started finding the funded trader from there. Like I've gone to FTMO, all the rest of them, but they didn't give me that satisfaction as much as your company did. So I'm glad that we were able to, you know, provide good service to you. Definitely, yeah, definitely a great service to be honest. I've been with I've been with FTMO, my forex funds, but it just doesn't beat the the funded trader. There's something about your company that just I don't know stands out from the rest of them. It's just the challenges that you do, everything that that your company gives out more than takes. That's that's what I like about your company, and it's truthful. It, it it's honest. They don't lie about things. They don't need to hide things, and that's how it is. Yeah, you said it, you know, we oh, here at the Funded Trader, you know, we really stress transparency to our traders and I'm glad that it's well received. Definitely, definitely, definitely. It's the first actually funded program that I've joined that I've actually enjoyed. Like I've been with FTMO, I've done my Forex fund, but I've never really got that support. Like there's always been some problems around the line and I've, I've just had to walk away, to be honest with you. And so I guess now it's time for the big question. Yep. How many times have you blown an account? <laughs> a lot, a lot. I would say FTMO accounts, probably about 15 or 20. I've passed them and then I've blown them. I've passed them and I've blown them. Never really made profits on them. Never really got withdrawals on them. Then my Forex funds done the same thing. Passed them, blown them, passed them, blown So I'd say about 30 or 40 of my funded trading accounts have blown. So yeah. I've gone, a lot, I've gone through a lot of blown accounts and that's 
comes down to psychology because it wasn't even my trading plan. It was down to my psychology that I blew them accounts. It was just bad risk management. Now, what are your favorite pairs to trade? Favorite pairs to trade? To be honest, I look at the majors. So like Euro, USD, NZD, USD, uh, USD card. I trade mo mostly the major pairs. Sometimes I would go to the exotic pairs only if there's an opportunity there. Is there any particular reason you stick with the majors? Yeah, because they trend better for me and they respect major levels as well for me. For, for my strategy, it suits it best. Gotcha. Do you ever touch indices or commodities at all? Should I be honest, I've tried indices and I've tried commodities and I didn't really enjoy them. Gold here and there, I have traded a gold here and there and made a bit of money, but it's just not for me. I prefer Forex market just because I see indices uh, have too much wide movements at times, like stop losses have to be so big and so wide and there's not much profit margin for me there too. And not only that, you have to hold on longer terms as well if you want to make more profit with indices. That's one thing I don't like as well. Even though I understand you can scalp it, but it's just not for me. And would you say you're a swing trader, an intraday trader, or more of a scalper? I'm more of an intraday slash scalper. So I'd hold trade for like at least one or two days or sometimes a couple of hours in a day. Not longer than that. I've never, I've never held a trade for three, four days. That's just too much for me. And what time frames are you usually looking at price on? So I'm a multi time frame analysis. So I use four hour, one hour, and fifteen minutes, and also the daily as well. So I look at, I look out for daily breakouts, and then I'll go out down to the four hour and see if it's respecting that, and then I'll go to the one hour and fifteen minutes for entries. Normally, fifteen minutes, I take my entries just to get the best entry possible. And do you use any fundamentals at all in your analysis? Nope, no fundamentals. I look at the news when that's coming out and uh, avoid avoid it if it's stronger news like red alerts, then I'll avoid trading at that time. If I'm already in that trade, I'll just manage my position and let it keep running. If it hits a break even, it hits break even, I just let it go. All right. With all that said, you mind giving us a quick insight into your strategy? Let's hop on the chart. Yeah, 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 definitely, definitely. Awesome. Let's do it. All right. So this, this is how I normally trade. So right now I was looking at this chart. So if I back off from here right now, so right now I'm looking at this chart. I go on to the daily and see what's happening. I can see a push up, but then also I can see resistance around this area here. So what I would do from here, I would go on to the four hour. I would go all the way back here. And I would start to and I start to draw out my zones. For example, I draw out my zones from the lower highs to the higher highs. I would always draw out my zones going that way. So I draw out my zones there. For example, it made a lower high, and then I would continue all the way back here. And I would wait for a touch. I'd wait for a touch. As soon as it touches, I'll go down to the four hours. See if the four hours respecting as well. As soon as the four hours respecting for me, I'd wait for a second touch. And then while I'm waiting for a second touch, I'd go down. And then when I'm going down in price, so for example here, I'd wait for it to come back up for a, for a second touch. So here for me, it's made a double top. So I'm looking for double tops and double bottoms and looking for rejections. So as soon as it makes the first rejection, I'm not entering. I'm waiting for it to come back, pull back into my area for a double top. And as soon as it gives me a double top with a red candle rejection, I'll enter on that. For example, I took this trade previously, entered on a red candle here, and I put my stop loss above the previous high, not the, not the high that just happened, the previous high, I let my trade just run from there and then I just let it do its job. And also I will always put my targets to the next level. So how I would find my targets, I wouldn't look at my targets from the one hour or I wouldn't look at my targets, sorry, from the 15 minutes, I'd go to the one hour and the four hour and I'll see the next zone of support or the next zone of resistance. So I normally trade uh, support and resistance, higher highs, higher lows. So I'd go to the next zone and I'd look at my chart. If I can't see anything there, I'd go to the one hour so I can see support here. I'd put my support line here, take, take profit to my support line and exit my trades like that. And how do you set up your risk management for the, these kind of trades? So my risk management, not what I normally do. I've got a, uh, I've got an app on my phone. It's a pretty popular app. It's called 
Situni or S T I N U. So I'd use that. I'd put my account. I'd put my account details in there. I'd put one percent of risk. I only risk about one percent to zero point five of my account. No more than that. I'm not going over two percent. If I go over two percent in a day, then I'll just stop trading right there and then. So that's how I normally set my risk. So I'd come on to uh, trading view. I would set. I'd set this up here. And I would click on here, uh, go and create a new order. And from that new order, I'd take the price, the take profit and stop loss and go into my meta trader and set that up like that. And what would you say your average risk to reward is trading a strategy like average that? risk to reward? I'd say 1.5 to uh, 2. So 1 to 2 or 1 to 5. That's my average risk to reward. I wouldn't, I normally don't go over that. So the way it works for me is if my opportunity is giving me a one to three, I'll take it. If it's giving me a one to two, I'll take it. So normally it's around one to two, one to three, or one to one. And no higher than that, unless the opportunity presents itself to be higher than that. For example, here, I was looking at a trade here, which didn't go my way, unfortunately. So I looked at this trade, I seen it come up, made a new higher high, made a new higher low. And then what I did, I waited for a breakout. It had a breakout. I seen rejection candles. As soon as I seen them rejection candles, I went down to the 15 minute chart. Now I'm looking for a trade entry. So I see here that it's made a new higher high. And so it's made a new lower low. I'd wait for it to break this high, broke this high, came back and tested. Now I'd wait for a rejection, like wick rejection, for example, here's a wick rejection, here's a wick rejection, and it's made a wick rejection there, like a hammer, like a hammer here. So once that hammer got made, I jumped into a trade, put my stop loss below the previous uh, higher low, and took this trade up to the next level, which would be here. But unfortunately, that trade didn't go well. That's the reality of trading, not going to win all the trades. And what would you say your average win rate is trading a strategy like this? My average win rate, I'd say about 40 to 50%. That's my average win rate. I normally get 60% on good months, but it's really rare to be honest with you. It's normally 50 to 40%. And how many setups per week do you on average find per pair? It, it depends, to be honest with you. So what I do in the morning, I wake up, I look at my charts and look for opportunities. So normally I take one to two trades a day and if i cannot find any days throughout the week i would say max trades i take throughout the week i'd say about four or three or pushing it would be five so that'd be probably one a day or two a day and i see you have an ema on there is that the 50 ema yeah that's the 50 ema that just helps me uh, show the direction that it's going it, it keeps me intact with the direction because sometimes the charts can be confusing you can look at it and be like oh damn which way is this going so the ema helps me to keep my directional bias going up gotcha. and for our viewers at home who yep. are going to attempt to trade this strategy you got any tips yep. for them yeah my first tips are be patient wait for wait for a break and retest that's what i normally wait for and don't risk more than one percent of your account because you're not going to win all your trades and that's the best advice I'd give you. And if you do trade this strategy, always look at your higher time frame analysis before jumping to the 15 minute analysis. So what I normally do is I'll keep, um, I'll keep alert. So for example, this trade here, so it went up and I was looking at it to start creating a new higher high. It went up, failed to create a new higher high, came down created a higher low but failed to create a higher high so at this point I was looking at this and thinking okay if it breaks above this level I'm taking buys when it comes back to retest but unfortunately it didn't it failed so I waited for it to break came back and retested here so I, I, would, I would have entered here for a buy for a sell sorry and then next I waited for a second opportunity so I waited for it to make a higher uh, sorry, uh, a lower a lower high. So it made a lower high here. I waited for a bullish, bu red bullish candle, at least a momentum candle. As soon as it made a momentum candle, it closed, entered, entered a cell here and just let it go to the next target, which was around here. So if I go on to the one hour, this would be a bit more easier to see. Like you can see here, it's uh, formed, it's formed a, a support here. So support, support, support. It's a bit messy, but that's where I would normally take my targets. And what are your future plans for the funded trader? 
So my future plans for the funded trader is uh, to scale up my account size, to get a higher account size. For example, I'm aiming now to get 400K and uh, combine it to my 200K. And from there, just build up from there. That's my plan. Gotcha. And you're managing 200K account. You got it last Sunday and correct me if I'm wrong, but you're up about 10 or $11,000 so far. Yes, yes. You know, we're going to have to do an update on you <laughs> when you <laughs> get that first payout. <laughs> Definitely, 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 hundred percent. You know, it was hard, sweat and tears, but you know, I got, I got through it. The thing is, as long as you stick to your plan, it's, it's easy to do. You can easily accomplish, accomplish success. What I've learned, like I watch, like so, certain YouTubers that I inspire from, for example, Rox FX and. Uh, and Nick Sean, they inspire me a lot. And from there, I've learned so much information, how to manage my risk, how to manage my emotions. And from there, I've just I've just built my own strategy around that and just went from there, to be honest with you. I've never really per se joined a course, but I've learned everything myself. And, it, and, and it's a difficult roller coaster. I went through five years, six years struggling and it was really difficult, but I never gave up. That's, that's, that's the best advice I'd give, never give up. And long term, what do you believe the funded trader is going to do for the prop firm industry and beyond that? I think long term, uh, the funded trader has got potential to build more clientele to uh, continue supporting, uh, supporting their clients and their customers and continue giving those great customer service and hopefully giving those bigger packages for bigger accounts. That'd be great. Now, Usman, I want to thank you for coming on and doing this interview and giving us an insight into your strategy. But Yeah, definitely. But before we say goodbye, where can everyone find you on social media? So I've got a YouTube channel called A and U Trading. So that's A uh, N U Trading. And then also I've got an Instagram account called Lucid Dreams Store. So if anyone wants to find me there and uh, you know, want to learn the strategy, I'm, I'm more than willing to teach anyone the strategy. And we'll link those in the description as well. Yep. Once again, I thank you for coming on and I wish you the best in your trading journey and many more payouts to come. Yeah, thanks a lot. Definitely, definitely. I hope my information was informative and I hope I explained my strategy the best way I could. All right. Thank you, Usman. Until next no time. No problem. Take care.